This is Justin from GeneralsJoes.com, and I'm here with you tonight to give you an extra special unboxing slash video review of the long-awaited Boss Fight Studio Vitruvian Hacks action figure line. Most folks here should recognize the Vitruvian Hacks as being the uh, one of the largest earning action figure kickstarters of all time. Uh, grossed almost uh, or over four hundred thousand dollars, and that was a while ago, and that's gone through a few little production delays. Um, you know, some production issues overseas that uh, push things out a little bit, some conflicts with the Marauder Task Force and things like that. But I'm very happy to say that the first Kickstarter orders have started coming in and um, they are starting to be shipped as I record this and people should be getting them in their mailboxes very soon. And I would like to kind of debut the first little assortment uh, right here and right now. I have not opened these particular figures yet. This is going to be kind of my first exposure to them. The first assortment that is getting shipped out to Kickstarter backers is um, the Coral Gorgon, the Black Racer Gorgon, uh, Medusa, the Spartan Warrior, the Cursed Spartan, the uh, Talos, who is the Bronze Spartan, who I believe was a Kickstarter exclusive, and uh, the Gray Male Blank and the Transparent Orange Male Blank have all completed production and they are on their way. And I'm going to be doing a series of uh, of uh, unboxing videos focusing on the Gorgons first and then I'll do a second one for the Spartans and then I'll probably do a third one just to cover the blanks real quick so looking at you looking at us in front of you right here is uh, Medusa front and center in her package uh, the coral Gorgon is just behind her with that great coral snake deco and the black racer is right there with the black and gold deco all kind of variations of the same themes you can see all different gorgon sister or we've got medusa the lead gorgon sister and then two uh, gorgon troopers and uh we will bust these babies open and see what makes them tick i'm pretty excited to do this i've been waiting to get my hands on these for a very long time as a lot of folks have and um we're about to see if this is all worth the wait so i'm gonna put medusa aside for a moment i'm gonna save her for last um let's pull out the coral gorgon too and let's look at black racer first you can see Black Racer's got all black deco, some gold armor, pretty cool color scheme. The, the box art looks very good, nice dramatic kind of painterly artistic kind of look. It's by James Griffiths and uh, very cool artwork, I really like it. The package back, you can see they've got a little bio card on the back here. And the bio card goes through a little bit of historical documentation as well as some stuff specific to each character. Uh, black Racer is a member of the Gorgon Horde. Uh, once turned by Stenos Venom, the Gorgon Horde became the terrifying enemy of anybody who was unfortunate enough to cross their paths. The Black Racer Gorgons were blindingly fast and horribly violent. They could cross great distances in the blink of an eye, and while not venomous, would wrap themselves around their victim and crush them in their powerful tail before they could begin to fight back. Temporal Log. If the Gorgon army survived to modern times, it would be difficult for them to stay hidden. Sure, they're clever, fast, and ruthless enough to eradicate any proof of their existence, but that all seems very unlikely, doesn't it? One thing I like about this bio card is there's kind of some hints that maybe uh, maybe there's a little continuity going on here. The, you know, the first glimpse you have is just like, okay, it's cool, it's a bunch of uh, Greek mythology figures, no big deal. But um, but you see this this whole temporal log. I don't know what they mean by that, but that sounds like kind of a time travel type of situation, a dimensional travel type of thing. So maybe there's going to be some kind of underlying story tying these all together. That would be pretty cool if they went through that. On the back of the package, you can also see. The There Are No Limits motto, and you collect them all, something I'm a big fan of for my G.I. Joe days, and little headshots of all the different figures that you can collect. And we've got Wave 1, 2, 3, and 4, which doesn't include any of the convention exclusives or anything, any of the skeletons or anything like that. These are just the straight-up uh, character figures. It's got a really nice package designed by Troy McKee. He did a great job kind of building the package, having it all um, organized really well. It takes a lot more work than folks might think. Um, the first thing I notice about the package that I actually really enjoy is it's kind of, um, it's, you know, it's got the, the clamshell um, surrounding it. You can see it's got plastic coating on the front, uh, but there's no tape on the back. It's all kind of folded down, so it keeps it together, but there's no tape. So, you know, to open this, really you're just, you're kind of folding the plastic and whoop, you slide the card right out, just like that. So really, if you like the artwork, and uh, who wouldn't like that artwork? It's beautiful. It's got a little, little female version of the Vitruvian Man, which is pretty cool. Uh, but it's a really nice, just collectible card, and you don't have to rip it or anything when you take that clamshell off. You can keep it just like that, which is really awesome. 
Now we pop open the clamshell here. And there's the black racer. Very striking paint scheme, all black with some gold armor, little kind of stone colored shield and, and helmet. And you know, I'll, I'll probably go into greater detail on Black Racer and then maybe skip over some of the other Gorgons just because, um, I mean, they're, they're based on a similar figure base. Um, so I don't need to go over every one of them in meticulous detail. Here is Black Racer. First, she's got this great kind of stone deco shield with Medusa's head on it. That's awesome. This little plastic bag filled with accessories right here. You dump those out. She's got a little boss fight studio stand. A great looking stone sword. A cool little stone colored sheath. And there's a couple extra hands here that she comes with as well. Now, I'm not sure precisely what the difference is of these particular hands. They look like slightly different grips. Um, but that's kind of the little the accessory she comes with. And then you've got the figure herself. And I'm going to tell you right now, just by getting my hands on her, this is, whoop, it's got a little ball joint system on the tail, which kind of holds it all together, does a really good job of holding it together. And let's just get her in the middle here. You can see she's very easy to, to pose and stand. The weight of the tail is really nice. It's actually rubberized, like the tail itself is kind of rubbery. If you look at the back here, you can kind of see a little give, like when you buck, when you bend it in, how the surface actually gives a little bit. It's It's got some rubber texture to it. It's got a plastic ball joint arbiter underneath, but the, the rubberized texture on the front really has, you know, gives you the kind of a cool snake skin texture um, without sacrificing any posability. And you can see I've been able to kind of pose around a little bit stand her on her tail without much difficulty throughout this process so far. Um, I mean, it, it's really pretty amazing. You know, this is, uh, I'm, I'm very pleasantly surprised. Just that the texture of the tail itself is something that um, I haven't really felt on a toy before. Just that, that the kind of rubber that they're using is really pretty clever. And it's got the different texture. You see it's got kind of snake scales on the top. Then it's got this little different belly texture underneath. So there are some deco alterations there, um, but you can straighten it out completely. And then each little segment has a different little armature. And you can see like there's a little gap there, which will, allows it to bend a little bit more in one direction. So you can coil it. And, and she stands up you know, pretty darn well. You will see these pieces do pop off um, not exceptionally easily, but uh, they do come off sometimes just by being a ball and joint, but they pop right back on with no problem. Of course, now, uh, now that I've said how easy she is to balance, it's, uh, she's going to give me some trouble balancing. You can kind of offset her a little bit with, um, by posing her, her top half too. Um, she's got a little ball joint torso here connecting her to her snake tail. So she can kind of move back and forth like that, move front and back all the way around. This is, an, this is a really incredible figure. I am amazed at the, the level of detail in the snake tail alone, um, you know, much less anything else. The, the figure itself is very solid plastic, feels like normal action figure plastic. It's amazing how skinny her arms are. Um, they feel very strong, extremely poseable. You can see she can curl her arms right close to her chest, which is great. Very flexible that way. And kind of another look at her tail in the back there. I don't know how well you can see that, but. I'm going to be posting on generalsjoes.com. I'm going to be posting some pictorial reviews of these figures too, of course, but I just wanted to give you kind of a, a quick look at, uh, at them in action, just because, the, especially where, you know, when it comes to like the, the posability of the tail, you can't necessarily express that quite as effectively in, in pictures. So it's kind of nice to get that video proof. 
Um, of course, the figure is called a hacks figure, and H A C K S uh, is is kind of the the specialty of uh, Boss Fight Studio. It's a highly articulated character kit system. So, as cool as these action figures look, they're actually designed as kind of custom kits, and the parts are really swappable. Like you can pop the head off. This little post you see here, um, you know, it, it's actually a, a double-ended joint, I believe. I, yeah, so you can pop that out. Because I know in some cases, you know, from, from other action figures lines, the ball is on the neck, and in some, and, uh, and in hacks, it's kind of in the skull. But so, and what that does, that enables it to sit a little bit further down on the neck and look a little bit more realistic. But you can pop that dumbbell out as well and put more normal heads on there too. I don't know how well they fit that, um, that po I, you know, obviously these posts aren't a universal size. So there's no guarantee that any head you want, you know, Star Wars or G.I. Joe or what have you, will fit on there. But it's cool they added that little double-sided dumbbell post there so you can use more or try to use more standard necks if you really want to. Um, you can see she's got this little removable helmet or headdress, I guess, is probably a more appropriate term. Uh, it looks like kind of the skull and spine of a dead snake, which is kind of kind of nasty, but kind of cool. She comes with that, and the Coral Gorgon comes with that as well. Um, I showed you all these little weapons. The one thing that I really like, uh, I already mentioned how posable her elbows were. Um, you know, one cool thing about that is when you get, you know, something like this, this nice, very cool looking stone textured sword, which is rigid plastic, by the way. It's not like um, kind of semi-soft plastic that'll warp. Um, it's very, it's it's pretty rigid plastic that stays nicely, uh, nicely firm. It's not you're not going to get a package shipped in and have the weapons be all warped, which is very cool. This is one of the great things about having folks like Boss Fight do figure design on this stuff. It's they make these figures how they want them, you know. And and people complain about the delays and stuff like that, but I really think that. You know the, the end result is is worth the wait just because you know they're they're perfectionists and you know, obviously some you know a lot of stuff was out of their control but they also wanted to make sure they brought a product to the market that was um, quality and you can see how she holds her sword with two hands pretty nicely and obviously I'm, I'm doing the video here I'll be able to get some even better images once I do the pictorial reviews but this is kind of a quick shot of how how well she can hold. Um, these weapons and of course she's got her little sheath too. The sheath is actually a little bit flexible it's kind of a rubberized material. Pop her sword and her little headdress off. And the sword of course slides neatly right into the sheath. Now she's all equipped and ready to do battle with the Spartans, which is pretty cool. One of the neat things she comes with, too, is the, this. I showed you the shield already, but I didn't really get into how the shield works. It's, it's pretty impressive. They've got a couple different ways to make it work. First of all, they've got this little you know, grip right here, like you see with you know, any number of Captain America shields or whatever. They've got this little clasp here that's semi-rigid plastic. You can actually pry it apart and kind of put it around her arm and close it and it stays very very firm like even though she's not grabbing that handle the shield will stay on there to perfection i mean it doesn't it doesn't slip off at all you can't the the grip on the shield is a little bit small um it's not terrible i mean you can you, her fingers are soft so you can kind of flex her fingers in you know straight and slip it into the handle with no problems um, but I don't know if I'll have to check the Spartans and see if their shields are the same height. Because if they are, I could see some issues with those handles being too small. But if they clasp around the arm like this one does, it's not going to be a big deal at all. But that's essentially Black Racer. She comes with a stand, interestingly enough. She doesn't have legs or feet to go on the stand. But um, as you can see, she doesn't really need them. You could tell I, I kind of struggled a little bit sometimes with getting her to stand up. But not really. I mean, she, she stands up pretty well. Pretty well balanced on that tail. Pretty realistic. A really, really great figure. I mean, I didn't even go into the sculpting. How amazing the sculpt on this, you know, the, the ab armor here, the breastplate, the gauntlets. Her hands are removable. They 
pop out really easily. Pegs on the hand and they pop back in just as easily and still feel just as secure. I already popped the head off for you. Um, I'll, you know, I'm, I can take the breastplate off. Maybe I'll grab one of the other ones and take the breastplate off of that one. But um, that's essentially, that's Black Racer, and she's a very, very cool figure. And uh, look, let's look at some of the other ones next. Next up is the Coral Gorgon. And she is, and you look at her, and she's essentially, she's a repainted version of the Black Racer. She's got the same breastplate, she's got the same skull headdress, uh, same snake body, looks like the same sword. I haven't broken into the accessories yet, I'll check that out. Um, but for the most part, she's pretty similar to what we got with the Black Racer, just with a really cool coral snake, red, black, and yellow deco. She's got the same back. Her card's a little bit different. It's geared towards uh, the corals. Uh, this once human Gorgon horde was turned by Steno's bite. Once altered by her venom, the all-female army's past lives became a haze as they become loyal to Steno even in the afterlife. Unlike the stone warriors turned by her cursed eyes, the Gorgons can never be turned human again. The coral gorgon's bite is deadly poisonous. If victims don't succumb to their brutality, then they will bite, then they will to their bite, as the potent venom slowly stops their heart. Temporal law. The gorgon horde's brutality was unchallenged by any army since their rampage in ancient Greece. The, far, oh, the coral gorgons from the backbone and are, by far, the most numerous of the gorgon horde, and armed with tomorrow's weapons and technology, could anything stop them? So once again, that temporal log seems to indicate there's some kind of continuity here. And that we could be seeing, um, you know, a Gorgon attack in the 21st century, which is kind of a cool little twist. We'll have to see where things go. I would imagine each wave that comes out is going to kind of build on that story a little bit. Um, this art also was done by James Griffiths with package designed by Troy McKee. And uh, clamshell works the same way. Kind of fold it out. Slip out the backer. Pop the coral gorgon out. Slips right out of that clamshell. She's got a different head, of course, than the black racer. She's got a closed, closed head sculpt, closed mouth, you know, kind of wider eyes, uh, a sloped bald head. A very, very cool look. Uh, a little bit different than um, than the, the black racer, but looks really awesome. And digging into her weapons, it looks uh, at first glance like she's got pretty much the same gear. Yep, she's got the shield that we saw, the same Medusa shield, the stone sword, a couple extra hands, the boss fight studio stand, and the skull snake headdress. And then the figure, of course, looks, like I said, a little bit different. It's Balances just as well, which is great. Very striking, you know, kind of brownish red, black, and yellow paint scheme. Very, very cool, based on the coral snake, obviously. Uh, I love that head sculpt. That head sculpt is really awesome. Just those two fangs sticking out of the mouth in front, those big yellow eyes. Um, you know, the, the headdress and the gauntlets. And the basic figure is the same, but with a different head and um, you know, some, some slight tweaks. She is a fantastic figure. It actually doesn't look like she comes with the sheath that the Black Racer came with, so that's a little bit different. You can hold the weapons really well, and you can see that the, the wrists are multi-jointed. You know, it can stick up like that, it can go out like that. So that's a really cool look. I really like this figure. Very colorful. The coral snake pattern is really awesome. It's got that same shield. So we'll open that little clasp, close that around her arm, close the clasp, and boom. There she is. That is a hell of a nice looking figure. You don't get a full appreciation through pictures and probably not through video either of the intricacies of the snake scales that are sculpted on here. I mean, there are thousands of little miniature scales all through that tail. And the fact that they can 
work that armature in, that flexibility, that rubber snake skin with the paint deco, it's, it's astounding. <laughs> that is a great, great looking figure. Both her and the black racer are just fantastic. I want to mix up their hands. And once again, you kind of saw that, you know, I didn't, no camera tricks here. I pulled her right out of the package and was able to balance her pretty quickly without, uh, without much fuss. And, I mean, they're totally movable. You can move those tails however you want to, kind of pose them in any sort of different method. Um, do all sorts of cool, fun things. And I like that the troopers have these kind of similar headdresses. That's a nice touch. Um, boss fight stands that while you can't use for these particular figures, you've got them for others. Um, these are just, they're excellent. And of course, what would the Gorgons be without their faithful Gorgon leader? That's Medusa. Now Medusa is going to be a little bit different. She's similar in the way that she's got the same base female body, snake tail. Um, obviously a totally different head, uh, totally different armor kit and weapons. Um, the knife looks like it's popping out a little bit of its space up there, but not a big deal. Artwork also by James Griffiths. Package design on this one also by Troy McKee. Same collect them all icons over there. Now, unfairly cursed by the goddess Athena, the once beautiful Medusa was turned into a hideous half-snake monster. Previously able to control, thing, control her cursed stare, Medusa now turns all living things that look into her eyes to stone. There is only room in her heart for hate and revenge against the gods she once served and the sisters who she secretly despises for their eternal beauty. She wants all the living to eventually feel her icy stare. Temporal log. It is said that even after being decapitated by Perseus, Medusa's eyes still curse those who look upon them. It makes one wonder if simply separating her head from her body was enough to end her life. If not, what has become of her head, and could she still be quote-unquote alive today? Once again, a little connection to the possibility that this might be an ongoing storyline. This might not just be some sporadic uh, Greek mythology homage. They may be working towards a, a bigger thing here, which is very, very cool if you ask me. I'm big on story when it comes to my toys, so uh, I would love it if they decided to do that. Like the others, you can unfold the clamshell and simply remove the card without causing any tape damage or anything like that. Put that over there. The figure pops out. Yeah, there's her dagger. She's got a little bone dagger. The dagger is made of a soft material, so it is a little bendy. It doesn't look like it's warped at all. Medusa pops right out of there pretty easily. Got this great little snake spine whip, which is a really cool looking weapon. Also rubbery, as you can tell, very flexible, so you're not gonna scrape it and hurt anybody. And then I believe in this little plastic bag, all we've got here is her stand and her, uh, her extra hands. So you're not missing much here, but I will pry that open just to be sure. And yes, that is indeed the case. You've got the Boss Fight Studio stand, and you've got a couple green hands to match the black and red hands from the previous figures. Medusa's deco is primarily greens, although she's got a very cool kind of um, diamond-shaped pattern on the back of her tail, if you can see that. Once again, no camera tricks. You, you saw me pull her right out of the package and was able to get her to stand pretty quickly and easily. Very cool little snake pattern on her. She's got totally different armor and gauntlets than the two figures we've opened so far. Oh, we got the little, this might be a good opportunity. You can actually see the little joint there. Nice little socket. Holds things in very well. You heard it kind of click home. So yeah, I'm not at all worried when that pops out. I've, I've had that pop out as you could see with the black racer a few times. Pops right back in. Not a problem. There's Medusa. Don't look too closely at her. You might turn to stone. Uh, she's obviously got a totally new, totally 
different head sculpt compared to the other two. Um, yeah, my focus needs work there. But like I said, I'll be doing some pictorial reviews too where I can get some real scary detail. I kind of just wanted to show you these in action. Um, but the very cool kind of snake head sculpt that looks awesome. She's got this really great brushed metal armor on her breastplate, on her gauntlet here, her upper arm and her shoulder. These little like hip guards that fit right around her snake hips. Beautiful. I mean, beautiful in a completely horrific way. But I love those snakes on her head. The, the various shades of green are really great. Um, I'm going to, I would imagine, safely assume that she can hold this whip with no problems. Yep. Hold on tight. And hold this nasty bone dagger with no problems. I'm not sure why the bone dagger needs to be a different material than like the stone sword. But that's a question I might uh, inquire. There's all sorts of cool engineering stuff that you have no idea what goes into making some of these things, which is why it's so particularly exciting to me that a company like Boss Flight Studios can basically start off with, with nothing. I, I've kind of watched the whole process through. I mean, to be completely transparent, I've worked alongside the guys at Boss Flight Studios for quite a while. I've helped them with their website. I, I know them really well. They're really good friends of mine. Um, I'm trying to be as impartial as possible, but I also have an appreciation for cool toys, and I think it's tough to argue that these are, uh, are not cool toys. These are, these are exceptionally cool toys. But, um, but anyway, I've kind of seen this process go throughout, you know, drawing pictures on paper, excuse me, going to 3D sculpts, you know, going to the, to the factory and back a bunch of times, you know, delays. But the end result, these are production level, these are toys that you're not going to find at any Walmart or Toys R Us or, or even through any other third party uh, company on the market. These are fantastic, you know, fully articulated Gorgon sisters. These snake tails are, are great. The weapons are cool, very, uh, very clever designs. Um, these guys, I don't think there's any doubt, these guys know their stuff. And it's a shame that it's taken a little while for it to get to market, but I think once people are able to get their hands on them, they're going to love them as much as I do. Uh, Medusa and the Coral Gorgon and the Black Racer are the first three Gorgon sisters that are going out to Kickstarter supporters right now. They're uh, being packed and shipped. I was able to swing by Boss Fight today to, uh, to pick these up, and they are being packed and shipped as I speak. I can, uh, I can testify to that fact. So anybody who supported the Kickstarter and who bought these particular figures, you should be seeing them in the mail, uh, hopefully within the next you know, few weeks or a month, and you will enjoy them. I can almost guarantee it. I know I've enjoyed them, and I can't wait to cover the Spartans and start taking some pictures and really getting down and dirty with these. But uh, they look very cool, and thank you for joining me for the uh, Vitruvian Hacks unboxing and video review part one, the Gorgon Sisters. Uh, I'll be bringing up the Spartans next. Okay, in my review for the Gorgons, I said I was going to show kind of what was under the hood, so to speak, without being too vulgar. Um, so I'm, I've got Black Racer here with... Or awesome head sculpt. I I can't even mess with these figures without marveling over how amazingly well detailed they are. But um, she's got this little chest plate, and um, I believe uh, the coral gorgon's got the same kind of thing that slips right off over their head. So you can see the snake body. She's got scales right there throughout her rib cage. Was pretty awesome. Uh, and she's got gauntlets here. If you saw the um, the Spartan video, you saw me take off uh, Talos's leg armor. This is the same way. They're very squishy. Slips off very easily. Slips back on very easily. The hand slips off and on with no problems and stays nice and secure. So that's kind of the look. Gives you a better idea of articulation. You can see the joint right in there, how it meshes with the tail. <laughs> it's really, really amazing. She can rock all the way back, all the way forward, like crazy amounts forward. It's pretty much pretty nuts, pretty nuts. That's a black racer. Medusa is a little bit different. Um, Medusa, I'm not gonna actually take the stuff off because you, well, I guess I could, yeah, like that. 
you pop. That's how easy the torsos come apart, which is great. I mean, it's easy enough so that it's, if you want to do it, you can do it, but it doesn't happen by accident. So it's, it's pretty well put together. Um, and obviously your little hip guards slip off the same way. And the armor will, um, like on her shoulders and, and the gauntlets on, you have to kind of take the arms apart in order to get those off. I'm not going to do all that. But um, I did kind of want to give you a little look at how all those parts come off and how kind of you can really begin to see the customizing potential here. Like, you know, if you had a couple of black racers and you wanted to get a black racer leader, you could, you know, get another Medusa and take some of that armor and put that armor on the black racer. And all of a sudden, you know, she's got a little bit better deco and or better uh, armor complements. It's, it's really amazing. They really are customizable, you know, character kits. It's, it's not a... Not a misnomer. They they do very well with that, um, and it's cool. I mean, it, it, they happen to be very fun figures, but they're also customizable, and and you can part swap them very easily. It's really awesome. And um, there you go.